does God's wrath actually show his love? I'm responding to uh, Christian apologist Melissa Doherty from Cross Examined, which is Frank Turk's uh, apologetic Christian ministry. Um, morally perfect gods who are in charge of creating and maintaining everything that exists do not need attributes and human emotions aimed at correcting immor immorality any more than a perfectly talented artist needs an eraser for their pencil. The existence of wrath and justice in the world betrays the fatal flaw at the heart of Christian theology. Both of those things inherently require there to be moral evils to fix. If you really believed in a God of perfect love, perfection does not allow for a single drop of evil to exist to even be rectified. If I show you one God who allows evil and another that does not, what are the odds the one who allowed even one drop is likely to be the truly morally perfect one. There's no wiggle room here at all. What moral standard could you hope to defend apart from the impossible nonsense of perfection now with blemishes or moral perfection now with accommodating blemishes of evil? And this impossibility is acutely demonstrated given the unavoidable Christian theology that supposes every human born of another human was born by the billions, literally precursed to toil and die for sins they did not commit. Toil and death is explicitly a punishment in Genesis, and it is explicitly impossible to deserve in the genesis of every new human. There is no way that the punishment of toil and death afflicted on humanity by default is justified as literally no one could have earned it before they even existed. And the two people we are supposed to have all come from were expli explicitly given a morality test despite explicitly not being able to comprehend the subject of morality. Adam and Eve could only have known that disobedience was morally wrong if they had eaten of the fruit of the very knowledge of good and evil before they ate it, another pristinely perfect moral impossibility as a foundation of Christian theology. Justice, wrath, and evil should not exist if your all-powerful, all-knowing, morally perfect God, who is absolutely in charge of creating and maintaining anything else that exists, exists. Slate-of-hand magic tricks are being used by Christian theology to sneak evil into a moral paradigm that cannot possibly accommodate even an iota of it. Wrath and justice themselves have only limited utility as it is in our imperfect world. They are understandable psychological expressions of moral imbalance in the wild prior to civilization as brute motivation to destroy a problem that just needs to go away. But civilizations in less extreme circumstances as a rule find themselves more successful in cultivating stable citizenry when they invest in prevention and aim at reform rather than the waste of brute punishment. Most of their problems aren't ever going to just go away otherwise and cannot simply be pummeled to death with a stick. And prevention is something an all-powerful, all-knowing God could easily have done given the already established conventions of Christian theology that we find right there in Genesis. For example, not letting Adam and Eve have children could have been part of the penalty for sinning. Adam and Eve could have been punished for their own uh, crime and then Yahweh could have created two new humans and given them a shot at maintaining paradise instead. That move alone in one easy swoop nixes all of the evil of history with a mere womb-closing trick Yahweh freely practiced throughout the rest of Genesis on seemingly pointless whims. Or in terms of reform, Yahweh could have guided Adam and Eve back to perfection over perhaps hundreds of years and, th and only then allowed them to have children who would therefore be born into the same perfect starting circumstances every new human deserves out of the gate. If God actually loved humanity, there would always be a guarantee in life that each human gets to grow up to be an adult, that they would always be born to good parents, that they would grow up in a good culture, they would be guaranteed the right spiritual instruction from the right sect of the right religion, their brain chemistry would be sufficiently free of all manner of mental illness, and everyone would have an entirely reasonable shot at getting things right. But God does not so love the world. 
Human sacrifice and blood magic are a poor substitute for actual divine guidance for billions of people who have obviously been grossly neglected. Instead of anything sensible, Christian theology moves the dial up to 11 when it comes to the worst foibles of, of the all too human conventions of wrath and justice. Saving all of the moral progress supports to the very end of everyone's lives when absolutely nothing can be done about it to impact their eternal destiny, de oh, sorry, destinies is morally deranged in the highest degree. What if the police only record your, nine, your, your 911 calls your whole life and then dish out justice at your funeral? How different and debilitated might your life have been then? How much more so your spiritual life without proper divine support along the way? The Christian God expects his brand of moral perfection from people born explicitly morally imperfect who are also explicitly ignorant of his brand of morality. Even luckily being born into a Bible-based culture, assuming the Bible represents a true divine morality, leaves you without the ability to ask even a single important question. Not even one. No answer you get in, in this life will be answered with real divine authority instead of something a sinful and unauthoritative apologist made up that only might turn out to be true, if that's any consolation. And then God unconscionably drops all of those expectations of moral perfection on billions of people on Judgment Day and expects anything but abysmal results? Seriously? It is incredibly hard to see the wisdom here, but it is easy to see how a gratuitously false moral solution of Judgment Day manages to skirt reality by hiding in a forever retreating judgment day. And then there's idolatry, something that is mentioned in the video and throughout the Old Testament. Honestly, the Old Testament is obsessed with an invisible God who was competing for the religious affections of a people prone to worshiping inanimate objects. Actually existing on a regular basis might have mitigated that one a bit better, I would think. Uh, much like someone could probably do better on a dating show by demonstrating that they are in fact flesh and blood boyfriend material and that the competition is uh, just a dildo. But I digress. Maybe it's such a frantic competition for people's hearts because all of the non-existent gods seem about equally good at uh, getting results. You know, call all the invisible cops you want or call different invisible ones if those don't work. Rinse, repeat, etc. Quite the nonsensical the theistic soap opera given only a palette of superstitious solutions. And uh, how, all, how did all of that turn out as far as uh, the Bible goes? Jesus is tempted in the desert by Satan and offered all the kingdoms of the world to rule, which betrays that Satan had been winning pretty hard up to that point. Are we really to believe that an all-powerful, all-knowing, morally perfect God was literally that bad at his job, having lost the whole earth to Satan? The evil dildos won. Or might Christian theology be cursed with the reality of its imaginary conventions fitting the confines of a tiny newborn Jewish sect, justifying its highly exclusivistic tribal truthiness in painfully implausible prose? Jesus' raging apocalypticism that must have assumed everything was as bad as it could have possibly been in the first century and that only his imminent wrathful return could solve all of the human problems was wrong. Wrong in that he did return within the lifetimes of his followers, as he promised. And more importantly, wrong in that after we got over the lengthy, culturally debilitating Christian Dark Ages, humans did actually have what it takes to improve the world on their own steam on just about every metric we might care to measure. I highly recommend Steven Pinker's book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, Why Violence Has Declined, that rigorously discusses all the impressive data that shows the world is becoming a better place despite common human cynicism to the contrary. Please check it out. Your worldview of things will be completely changed. So if the Christian God is truly hostile to sin, he need only look to himself as the ultimate culprit. As Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, the potter, who's supposed to be God, may fashion for himself a clay pot for common purposes, which means a sinner predestined to destruction. But well, as we say in American politics today, he built that. Something he's inherently hostile to. It's like someone with cat allergies buying a cat. 
slow clap. The Wrath of the Christian God is a grossly lopsided moral farce and petty theological overcompensation for its morally impossible foundations. A morally perfect God cannot accommodate the existence of an iota of evil. People who don't understand morality can't be given a morality test and then punished for getting it wrong. And new humans can't be punished with toil and death for crimes they could not possibly have committed. Human sacrifice and blood magic cannot reasonably be expected to solve any real moral problem for all of humanity. Morally imperfect people who are ignorant of true divine moral perfection cannot be judged fairly against it. Loving humanity requires actually taking care of humanity. Saving moral resolution for an end of the world that never comes merely diverts human attention from continuing to solve our real problems in the here and now with reasonable mitigation tools that have actually been shown to work. So that's a lot to think about. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments.